Hi everyone, my name is Somo, I am from Fazal. In this video, I will be discussing on pathogen life cycle and its uh, uh, disease control process. So, like human beings, uh, every living creature on the earth has its own life cycle. So, in this process, they grow, develop and produces of the produces offspring and die. Pathogens are not exempted from this. Then what do you mean by life cycle? So, whether the life cycle and disease cycle are same. No, the disease cycle is different from the life cycle. So then what do you mean by life cycle? The life cycle of infectious disease is the sequence of distinct event such as sexual reproduction that occurs, the, that occurs between the appearance and reappearance of the causal organism. This is known as life cycle. Then what do you mean by the disease cycle? So the disease cycle means the appearance, development and perpetuation of the pathogen and the effect of disease on the host is known as disease cycle. So because advancement of the disease involves the host, the pathogen and in uh, some cases biological vectors. So the life cycle of a pathogen as well as environmental factors are involved in the disease cycle. Next why it is important to know the life cycle of a pathogen. So to manage the disease effectively it's important to know the life cycle of the pathogen because some of the pathogens have both sexual and asexual reproduction that is the sexual and asexual life, uh, life cycle whereas some pathogens have only a sexual stage so all the pathogen does not require same weather conditions some pathogen requires a wet condition and some pathogen requires a cooler condition and few pathogen requires a warm humid conditions so if we come to know that at which uh, weather condition these pathogens will germinate then we can control the disease very effectively so the propagules such as spore or are resting structures uh, that over winters or over summers and initiate uh, an infectious uh, disease are referred as primary source of inoculum primary source of inoculum means the spores will uh, over winter or over summer in a few infected plant debris when there is a climatic condition suitable, they will germinate and produces the spores which will infect the plants that are known as primary source of inoculum. So then what is secondary source of inoculum? Secondary source of inoculum is produced by infectious, uh, produced by a pathogen that takes place during the same growing region. Means when the suitable weather conditions are there, the pathogen will continuously producing the uh, spores within the same growing season and with multiplier rate is very fast so there are three components are absolutely necessary in order uh, in order for a disease to occur in the any plant system the three components are uh, susceptible host uh, uh, virulent pathogen and favorable environmental conditions so if the host is susceptible then pathogen uh, have a ability to break the host barriers and enter into the uh, plant system if a pathogen is virulent so it can also ca cause the, the disease by breaking the plant uh, resistant power whereas if there is a favorable weather conditions pathogen grow multiply at faster rate where compared to unfavorable weather conditions so if any one of these conditions are not satisfied then disease will not occur example instead of susceptible host if it is a resistance host so pathogen cannot break that resistance and enter into a plant system so instead of virulent pathogen if the pathogen is avirulent means aggressiveness is less uh, to break the pathogen uh, uh, to break the pathogen plant system and enter into a plant system so if a pathogen is avirulent it cannot enter into a uh, plant system if environmental conditions are not favorable so for example so if a pathogen requires some uh, 25 to 30 degrees celsius for its growth and multiplication if there is less than that one or more than uh, 30 or less than uh, 20 the pathogen cannot grow and multiply at faster rate so thereby you cannot see the disease intensity uh, on the plants so in order for a disease to develop a pathogen must be present and successfully invade uh, plant host tissues and cells so the chain of events involved in the disease development includes one is the inoculation another one is the penetration another one is infection another one is the incubation 
reproduction and finally survival so let's see one by one what all of this process so inoculation inoculation means this describes the introduction of the plant to the host different pathogen groups employs different inoculation methods and are equipped with the various specialized mechanism that aid in the inoculation process for example some pathogen releases pores into air and and moves through a air and are spread through a air so this is an inoculation process so next is the penetration so pathogen enter through a wounds natural openings such as stomata hydrothodes uh, that facilitate uh, that facilitate the entrance of some plant pathogens so other have evolved inoculation mechanism for direct penetration so fungi nematodes uh, for uh, for example of this uh, pathogens can uh, enter the host directly by releasing some enzymes which break the uh, host barriers and enter into the host system this is the penetration way next come the next comes the infection this occurs when the pathogen invades the plant tissue and establishes a parasitic relationship between itself and the plant so virus bacteria and pedoplasmas are not able to penetrate to, uh, or to enter the host tissues so these uh, viruses or pedoplasmas requires some uh, external uh, uh, factors like uh, it requires uh, insects as a vector Uh, to enter into uh, host tissues virus uh, cannot in, uh, directly enter as a fungi or nematode it cannot directly break the uh, it, it, yeah, it cannot uh, directly break the host so by so that's why it will uh, travel through uh, insect as a vector it's uh, out as a insect as a vector through which it will move when the insects suck the sap from the infected uh, plant and uh, if it go on sit on the healthy plant so thereby it will releases the virus particles there so this is the infection process incubation so one once inside the inside the pla plant the pathogen may undergo an incubation period so incubation period means when the pathogen uh, enter into host and uh, it will start to grow the, inside the host and absorb the nutrients so thereby after after that uh, you can see the symptoms so from in uh, from uh, penetration till the expression of the uh, symptoms so in, in between this time is known as incubation period so in this uh, time the pathogen will uh, uh, para parasitize inside the uh, host and absorb the uh, host nutrients and develop so after absorbing the nutrients after uh, uh, taking all the nutrients from the host so thereby you can see the first symptom on the plant so then comes reproduction plants can reproduce sexually and asexually it depends on the pathogen next finally comes the survival so plant pathogens have evolved, uh, evolved so they can survive prolonged period of unfavorable weather conditions for example like in the grapes you can take the uh, oose spores oose spores are the resting spores where they can uh, overcome the adverse climatic condition and they can uh, uh, be in the infected debris or in a soil for a prolonged period of time where they can withstand the adverse climatic conditions once the favorable condition comes these spores will germinate and start to infect so in some cases some spores are resistant to uv light where uh, they can uh, so spores will be a dark in coloration so they can uh, resist for the uv light and all so these are the some of the survival techniques where the pathogens have so if any step is disturbed in the life cycle so the disease will be less severe or fail to develop so knowing and understanding the disease cycle of a, for a particular disease is very helpful in managing the plant diseases now we'll uh, we can see some of uh, the examples of uh, Uh, of life cycles like uh, the pathogen which have a sexual as well as asexual life cycle and the pathogen which have only a sexual uh, stage so let's see the life cycle for uh, you can take the life cycle uh, one of the life cycle like a uh, grape powdery mildew for example let's see so this is a life cycle of an uh, uh, grape powdery mildew 
so it is caused by a plasma for a viticola so here you can see this is the o-spore o-spores are the resting spores in a grape downy mildew so uh, this o-spore will uh, when the favorable conditions uh, comes when the weather fa weather favors this uh, o-spore will germinate and produces the sporangium so this is the sporangia 4 and this is the sporangium so this sporangium uh, germinates and in the inside the sporangium you can see here the zoo spores so these are all the zoo spores so this zoo spores uh, liberate through a opening known as a papillate here you can see small opening here so this is called as a papillate uh, palliplate so from this uh, it will releases so these are the zoo spores zoo spores have uh, two types of flagella one is the whiplash and another one is the tensile type of flagella so after some period the zoo spore uh, insist insist means it will lose its uh, uh, flagella so where this zoo spore come in contact with the uh, host like leaf uh, berries or twig uh, it will uh, sit onto a, a host it will adhere to the host and it start to germinate and uh, it will enter into host uh, leaves for example you can see here so here the mycelium is intracellular so you can see the mycelium is growing uh, between the cells so this is a astoria it is a knob like structure which absorbs the nutrients from the cells and it will grow so that is so this is all the astoria so where it has, it has entered into a cells so after absorbing the nutrients so you, you can see the symptoms on the leaf berries like this so leaves you can see the downy mass on the leaves so here so you can see the downy mass on berries so once the infected leaf uh, uh, leaves are infected you can see the leaves uh, having yellow patches like this sometimes these yellow patches will not appear uh, when you pick the leaf and see uh, seen towards the light means you can see the yellow spots like this so this uh, downy mildew will infect the leaves uh, grape berries and twigs and all so once if you take the leaf section uh, you can see here uh, here this is the structure of the pathogen where it uh, produces the uh, uh, sporangia and sporangia 4 in the right angle means it will be like this so this is the long sporangium so uh, sp long uh, sporangia 4 so it will be like this right angle to a triangle so here you can see the sporangium at the end so that is the picture here so this sporangium uh, again that uh, liberates so inside the sporangium you can see the zoo spores again the zoo spore insistment takes place and again it will uh, go on uh, fall and or uh, move on to another uh, host new host or new leaf and start infection so this can be spread by uh, uh, this can be spread by uh, wind or uh, rain splash through which it will move so these zoo spores are also called as the motile spores because uh, it will uh, swim through a water and its movement is very fast when there is a wet conditions that's why the powdery mildew uh, pathogen can be seen more during the uh, rainy season so this life cycle this complete life cycle from here to here this is uh, known as so this life cycle this is known as an asexual life cycle means uh, uh, anamorphic stage of the pathogen so when uh, this con this life cycle anamorphic uh, stage or asexual life cycle continues uh, when there is a suitable weather uh, climatic condition for a pathogen so once the uh, pathogen uh, feels there is no suitable weather conditions or when there is an unfavorable weather condition fungi switch on to a uh, sexual stage that is known as uh, here anthridium and ogonium so ogonium is the female structure anthridium is the male one so anthridium and ogonium contact takes place and it will form a resting structure that is known as oospore so again this oospore will germinate when there is a suitable weather conditions are prevailed so this oospores can be seen in the infected leaves or the dormant mycelia can be seen in the twigs 
so that's why the farmers are uh, instructed or told to remove the infected uh, plant parts or infected leaves because due to this reason only so the uh, mycelias or uh, the spores will be overwintered or over summer in this uh, uh, infected parts therefore when the suitable weather climatic conditions are there this pathogen will again germinate and cause the infection so this this uh, from here to here this is known as an a telomorphic stage that is the sexual stage so in the sexual stage means the host spores will be a resting spore which will uh, produces the sporangium inside the sporangium zoo spores will be there so again it will uh, zoo spores will uh, insist and it will infect the leaves and cause the disease so this again this uh, zoo spores is uh, released and it again it infect the new leaves it will be continuing when there is a suitable conditions when there is unfavorable conditions the fungi switch on to a sexual stage where it will take place uh, anthidium and oconium or the male and female structure which, which will go for a copulation and produces the resting structure that is known as the woo spores woo spores are the resting structure which uh, can uh, uh, overwinter or over summer and it can withstand the adverse climatic conditions and it will stay in the soil or infected debris so this is the example of a sexual and asexual uh, life cycle that is the grape powdery mildew and now we can see uh, another uh, one example that is the uh, the pathogen is having only a asexual stage here the, i have taken the example uh, alternaria leaf spot of uh, tomato and uh, it is also caused in uh, pot, uh, potato also so here uh, it is called as early blight so you can see this is the conidium conidium, conidium will uh, overwinter so conidia will overwinter or over summer so when there is a suitable weather climatic conditions this conidia will germinate so you can see the germ tube is starting here this conidia will germinate so once it start to germinate it uh, uh, it uh, once it start to germinate uh, it will come in contact with the host so where they can see uh, where we can see the direct penetration or uh, penetration through wounds so or uh, it will invade through leaves or invasion of the stem or fruits so once it infect the uh, any plant parts so you can see here the spore has entered into the host leaf so you can see here the intracellular mycelium so this is the knob like structure here you can see the astoria from which the nutrients are absorbed so once it start absorbing nutrient and start multiplying you can see the symptoms on the leaves the symptoms will look like a concentric uh, rings uh, surrounded by the hello hello so this uh, symptoms can be seen on fruits also you can see on the fruits there will be a concentric circles so you can see here the concentric circles can be seen so once the pathogen uh, enter inside the host it starts to absorb the nutrients and uh, multiply so and it will produce a uh, numerous of conidias like this so here you can see this is the conidia 4 so it's a long tube like structure this is the conidia 4 so on which conidia are born so these are the conidias so where you can see here the conidia 4 conidia and conidia 4 so again this uh, conidia 4 will uh, uh, spread through wind or uh, rain and again land into a new host surface and again it will penetrate into host and uh, it starts to multiply so by this method it will be uh, infecting the host so where you can see different kinds of symptoms on the uh, leaves twigs uh, or stem on fruit part so when there is an unfavorable weather condition the pathogen will uh, over winter or over summer and it will uh, wait for a uh, suitable weather conditions once the suitable weather conditions come uh, so again the conidia will germinate and uh, land into a host surface and it will uh, enter to a, a enter through a, uh, a it will enter the host by a germ tube and it start absorbing the nutrients and uh, it will uh, start to infect the plants so this is the example of an uh, only asexual life cycle so earlier grey powdery mildew have seen that is the asexual and sexual life cycle where uh, this is the example for uh, only a sexual asexual uh, life cycle
so every pathogen requires an a suitable environment condition for their growth and development so once we know so how the pathogen will uh, uh, germinate or once we uh, know how the pathogen will uh, uh, be in the infected plant host or where it will be in the soil or infected debris or uh, on the weeds so it's easy to uh, control so as i told that every as i told that every uh, pathogen requires a different climatic conditions for the growth and development so here yeah, the farmers cannot uh, see uh, how the pathogens will develop so you will not come come across uh, which climatic conditions is suitable for uh, which kind of a pathogen for example so some uh, climatic conditions are prevailing uh, the pathogen may germinate so example in the grape uh, donny mildew i discussed so here the oospore will germinate at uh, certain degrees uh, certain weather conditions and zoospores will multiply at uh, some other conditions so that's why it's very important to know the life cycle of the pathogen so once you come across the uh, life uh, life cycle of the pathogen then it's easy to uh, manage this one so here yeah, the farmers cannot uh, go and check each and every plant where the pathogen has germinated or not because pathogens are microscopic in nature we cannot see the uh, spores or spore germination so i request here the farmers to install the fuzzel uh, device so where our device will uh, monitor these things it will uh, uh, monitor when and uh, how the pathogens will uh, uh, develop or germinate at which weather uh, conditions it will germinate and uh, gives the farmer uh, alert that so there is a chances of a uh, particular disease uh, like for example there is a chance of a, a grape downy mildew in your uh, orchard so uh, take the spray so before the occurrence of the disease we will instruct the farmers to go for a spray so thereby farmers can take a precautionary measures or preventive measures thereby can, they can reduce the inoculum load in the in their farm or uh, thereby you can reduce the uh, input cost and fertilizers on uh, sorry input cost on uh, f fungicides uh, uh, fungicides so thereby you can uh, cut down your cost and you can uh, initially suppress the uh, plant pathogen development and you can get the good yield so hope this video is helpful for you so if you have any comments uh, please post uh, post it we will answer to that uh, comments thank you namaskar